Welcome to the channel. In this episode I will discuss a very important thing. Due to the specifications of this game, it is not obvious. And because there are more different activities than it used to be, then I would like to give you my vision of the most profitable and time efficient things. To daily grind. After almost two years, the game offers endless possibilities of exploration, adventure, and customization. However, not everyone is enjoying the game to the fullest. Some players have fallen into routines and habits that prevent them from discovering new aspects of the game. Others are overwhelmed by the complexity and diversity of the game and do not know how to progress effectively. As a result, many players are stuck in a rut. While others are progressing, the game is also designed to accommodate players who have less time to play that still want to enjoy the game and progress at their own pace. It offers daily rewards and challenges that can be completed in a short time but still provide meaningful benefits. The game is a marathon, not a sprint, and it encourages players to play regularly and consistently, unless you pay a lot. But no matter how much time you have, I would like to show you profitable activities and how to do them in a time-efficient manner. After doing absolutely necessary things, so that you simply have a lot of time for yourself. So what activity is currently the most important? Hidden Lairs Fortunately, we live to see when players began to notice how important secondary attributes are. Basically, wanishing lairs is more of a weekly task. But let's assume it's Monday, and we have the opportunity to get 126 regular gems. In my opinion, this is an absolute priority at this point. Often, when we leave something for later, we don't do it at all, and this is big waste. In one day we can complete 21 hidden lairs from each for doing tasks in Psy. We receive 6 gems and the fastest way to do it yourself. If you can't find lairs on Inferno level, I encourage you to lower the difficulty. We're mainly interested in gems, so other drops don't matter here. I think that an additional pro tip will be checking starting locations on normal difficulty. Cemetery or dark would usually have super small layers, so you can complete them quickly. It takes less than an hour to make all layers in one day. The benefits are huge. But if we are talking about normal gems, let's move on to the next important activity which is 12 normal gems for playing a full party. But where can you do this most efficiently? Akurs Tower And many players might say that you can achieve the same in dungeons or bestiaries, and of course they will be right but the tower guarantees you all 12 gems in less than 20 minutes. You won't be able to do it in the dungeons in that amount of time, and considering that you should do it every day, it's worth getting into the habit, because if one day you don't have enough time, the tower will provide it for you. Interesting that you shouldn't have any problems finding people willing to do so, even if they stand and do nothing. The tower guarantees them a drop of gems, which will later arrive in their mail. Of course, if at least one person defeats the mobs, 
the tower also provides a lot of other benefits. Due to the large concentration of elites, we get a lot of scraps and a chance for a familiar contract. I made a whole episode about the best method for making legendary familiars. I encourage you to watch if you haven't. If it comes to any advice about the tower, then apart from dropping regular gems, do it solo. Unfortunately, the drop of items and gold is only for the person who defeats mobs. So if you are slower than your teammates, then your drop will be much weaker. Don't forget about 10 gems to buy per week as well. All this guarantees you 220 normal gems per week, so you need less than a month to level up to 7 rank, if not counting the gem type. Another important activity for maintaining high secondary attributes is Ibn Fad Sanctum, specifically the Aspirant's Keys. This is another thing that I do not advise you to ignore in the long term. From the Sanctum itself we get for keys a day and one free loot box. Another three are obtained by completing Elder Rifts, but I will get back to the Rifts a bit later. Another twelve from the Shadow Assembly. Here it is necessary to choose a clan that belongs to one of the factions. Shadows seem more time efficient. Participating in Shadow Wars guarantees additional rewards but if your clan wins, you receive 15 keys and a legendary crest per week. Don't forget about 5 aspirate keys that can be purchased for hilts per day, just like in the case of regular gems. All this provides us with 171 aspirate keys per week. It's not a huge number, so I personally prioritize regular gems if I don't have enough time. And non-activity. That will gradually improve the level of our legendary gems and resonance. Elder Rift. I think most people know about collecting fading embers and about the possibility of exchanging them for the legendary crest. The problem is that it's nothing but the G word, and the potential for long-term progress lies behind rare crests. For the runes obtained from them, we can craft to star gems. In 2024, many players already highly appreciate this type of gems. Even if you don't care about them, it's still a decent source of gem power so I think rare crests deserve more attention. You can also get them for hilts. However, if you want a legendary crest, don't forget to do a raid with your warband. Raids are also profitable due to increasing the level of your Helkwiry. With all that being said, I have listed the most effective activities here that will guarantee you constant progress with minimal effort. As you most likely noticed, I didn't mention anything about legendary items and set items. This is because obtaining these does not actually guarantee you any progress. You can skip the entire difficulty level without any losses and only see a short-term drop in your character's performance. So of course, there's nothing wrong with trying to get better legendaries, but in my humble opinion, only if you have enough time for it. Otherwise, you should focus on long-term development first, but at the end of the day, it's up to you what you really enjoy in this game. Nevertheless, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. It helps a lot in developing the channel. 
So that's it. As always, thanks for watching.